Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Music invites connection. Music ignites our imagination. It can ease our mind or challenge our views. It can be a form of therapy or of protest. Music allows me a freedom that I have not experienced in any other part of my life. What I love most about music is how big and powerful it is, that it can take the hard stuff and ugliness of life and turn it into something of beauty. I am a musician, a singer, a composer, and a teacher. I have played amazing concert halls and tiny, tiny jazz clubs. And I've also played my fair share of background music gigs. My favorite being uh, when we were playing at a leagues club in Brisbane, Australia, and we were moved around the room because we were blocking the screens. You don't want to mess with football in Australia. It's a pretty big deal. I've been led by the flow of music and the people around me while we're improvising. I've also been led by what would the couple in aisle three prefer to hear this evening because they really don't like what we're doing. I have won awards for some of my albums, and I definitely have albums which have won no awards. But more than all of these things, I am a human being. And I decided a long time ago that it's my human job to be genuine and real, to be honest and kind. And I'm a fully-fledged human, so I do get it wrong sometimes. But that's my intention. And I allow this to infiltrate to my musician job also. I really do believe that it's as simple and as complex as that. Because I think all we have to do is to be courageous enough to surrender in order to touch other people deeply. I'd like to share the reasons why I've come to this conclusion and why this works for me, because maybe it'll work for some of you as well. So how did I find music to be such a powerful thing for me? Well, I invite you to come back to the beginning of my life. I grew up in a very small country town in Australia called Kamala. It has five streets, the Bruce Highway runs right through it, and it's just surrounded by sugarcane fields, some dairy farms, and some cattle farms. There wasn't much to do there, but it's a beautiful, hardworking, kind community. Often in my life, I felt very different. My dad was a farmer. My mum was a teacher, and I was a deep-feeling human, thinking, why are we farming cows? Um, but music was my place of solace. When things felt too much for me, I would just retreat to my room, close my door, and I would go to my cassette player. It was purple in colour. And um, I would put on my music. I would put on Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, the Top 40, if anyone doesn't know what a cassette player is, I'm very happy to, uh, to fill you in in the break. Um, so music would take me away. I wasn't just a kid in this town, in my family. I was somewhere else. I was held. I was safe. I learned firsthand the the transformative power of music. So I love to live in that land and have loved it for a long time. 
this situation and other things like in real life, that's much harder for me. So talking to you and doing my paperwork, uh, that's really a struggle. And um, I'm pretty sure I've managed to burn 80% of the pizzas that I've made in my life. But music, when I'm in music land, if I'm sharing about music, if I'm writing or helping a student formulate something that they can't quite grasp, there is where I excel. How did I come to know music's value and meaning in my life? Well, it's because I had to live without it sometimes. I'd like to share with you two lessons of loss. When I was 15, um, I was in a jazz combo at school. I was playing alto saxophone and singing, but singing was kind of becoming more my thing. We had a lecturer from the uh, local conservatorium of music, and he would play with us, so we were better than we should have been. Um, and we started to do gigs regularly. And then it got to the point where it was nearly every weekend, and this was so great, until it wasn't. I developed the start of nodules on my vocal folds, and the treatment was to be silent for two weeks, and then start speech therapy and singing lessons. The silence for a 15-year-old who already feels pretty different, that was fine. Um, but not singing was incredibly telling for me. I realized in this two weeks that I went to sing or hum multiple times in a day, and I really missed this. So now I'd like you to fast forward with me to the first year of my university degree. I was juggling a classical violin degree and a jazz voice degree and working myself really hard and really uh, not having a great time doing so. I was very driven and I was trying so desperately to be a good musician. Unbeknownst to me, between 15 to 18, I was becoming more and more unwell. My good friends could see it, my parents could see it, but I swore to them that this was just me now. But at 18, I was admitted into hospital and I was in there for three months as an inpatient and three months as an outpatient. I had to go to a certain hospital which was 900 kilometers from my family which was really tough. Um, my time there was very mixed. I was meeting some of the kindest, most intelligent people I've met, but every one of them thought they were not good enough and not nice enough and not smart enough. After a few weeks, I decided I perhaps should listen to these doctors and nurses who were trained in mental illnesses and look at my depression properly and consider living life without torment. So with the same determination that I'd put into punishing myself, I channeled it towards reclaiming my life. One story I'd like to share with you was when I was um, at the end of being an outpatient and I was in a car, I was in the back of the car, and my head was down, as it often was in those days, and I decided I really must start to lift my head and look out into the world. And as I did this, I noticed something to my left, and I looked over, and it was a very simple garden. But the difference was that it was all in color. I even lost color from my world for a time. I don't even remember when. So this period, yeah, it was really hard, but it taught me to savor the ordinary things that we take for granted. Color, the sound of a kid laughing or reacting to something. 
I think anyone who's tasted death's reality cannot really go on unchanged. Every one of you has a story. Everyone on this earth goes through hardships, but it's how we use them that makes all the difference. So I pose this question to all of you here. Why do you do your music, your writing, your illustrating, your research? Because that is your superpower. And you need to protect it and use it. And if you're not a creative person and you're able to do your paperwork in record time, what are the things that make you feel whole or joyful or peaceful? Because I'd like to encourage you to do more of those things because you deserve to feel that goodness in your life. Writing this talk actually showed me some things that I didn't realize before. I have always had very big goals and dreams, but I wanted to be on the world stage before I could talk into a microphone on the local stage. I wanted to be gigging regularly before I had a technique that could support that. I wanted to be touring before I could manage my depression and have healthy boundaries with people. <laughs> Sometimes we question our path because of adversity, but rough terrain doesn't mean that you're on the wrong path. This is Bill Evans. He's one of my biggest inspirations. I love his writing, I love his playing. And this is a quote that has kept me relatively sane through my journey as a musician. It's helped me to remember to just be myself and that the right people for me and me for them that will find each other along the way. He's quoted as saying, all I must do is take care of the music, even if I do it in a closet. And if I really do that, somebody's going to knock on the door of the closet and say, hey, we're looking for you. For me, it's really not about the gig that I'm at, it's about my intention. So if I'm playing in a closet or if I'm playing to a few people, or if I'm being moved around because of screens, um, I'm trying to do my, my best and to connect with the people who are present. So how do you want to do your job, your human job? We all affect one another whether we like it or not. So we may as well think about how we would like to affect one another for the better. And maybe, just maybe, your clarity and direction in your human job can infiltrate your other job. I'd like to share one last story with you. This is Wayne Shorter. He is one of the pillars of the jazz idiom, if you will. In 2016, I had the honor of meeting him. I was playing with my band at the Melbourne International Jazz Festival. And even though I'd had success in my career, I had a new album, I was playing this festival, which is a big deal in Australia, I was very disillusioned with where I was at. The interviewers were super excited to have him in the, in the interview. Um, I'm sure they were a little bit excited to have me, but I'm not sure. Um, and they were asking him about his Grammys, his contacts, his albums, his accolades, and he was sort of swatting this away politely for a while, and then he just said, look, it's not about me. He looked directly at me and said, music was here long before I was, and it'll be here long after I leave, and I'm just trying to ride the wave while I'm here. I had tears in my eyes and hope restored again in my heart. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share. Thank you for listening. 
and I would like to share with you a song of mine. This is entitled, Maybe. <laughs> 